So today I thought I would do something a little different. I thought I would talk a little bit more about my seed harvesting um, and kind of my tiny small scale canning efforts so far um, this year and sort of my thoughts on it. So I'm going to start off by showing you how I harvested the seeds from my coxcomb plants. I like to leave them outside. You know, if I had enough surplus, I would bring some indoors. But uh, they're so beautiful outside that I'm and and the the bees and the other um, bugs really the butterflies really love them. So I'm leaving them outside, but they're definitely starting to pop seeds. So. I, I've never harvested coxcomb. I just watched them closely to see what they look like. And I knew what the seeds I had been given by somebody else who harvested them from their plant. I knew what those seeds looked like. So when I saw the little black dots poking out of the edges of the coxcomb, I thought, that's probably the seeds. I harvested some. I pulled out some of the leftover ones from the ones I got last year. They looked the same. And I looked online just to con kind of confirm that I was probably doing the right thing. And... Um, now, I haven't tested them for their um, whether they're actually viable or not, but I figure if they are willingly giving up the seeds while they're still out there, then that's how they self-seed. And so the chances are very high that these are viable seeds. All right, now let me show you. I'm about to harvest the seeds, some more seeds from my coxcomb. I already had harvested some, but I figure there's an easy way to show it. And since I have one hand full, um, I decided to show you this is the equivalent of I normally have my hand down here underneath this but I'll just use the paper towels and you can see see how well you can see you can see that there's some little black seeds coming out and that is the seeds you want to harvest so I just go like this and you can see just by stroking the seedy area seed filled area I'm getting a whole bunch of seeds just from this plant now I try I heard somewhere that it's a good idea to do multiple plants um, I only have I think three or four coxcomb plants this year so I won't have a huge variety genetically to borrow from um, hopefully in future years. So that gives you an idea of how I harvest them. And then since it is wet today, I would probably leave them on this paper towel inside to dry, um, you know, for four or five days. I might do a little more from another part of the coxcomb. For example, this little guy right here seems like it's perfect to harvest, but then again, I only have two hands, so I'll come back and do that later. But you get an idea of how easy it is to get seeds from some things. All right, so here we have the seeds I harvested. You just saw me harvest. Um, and then I also have um, some other things in here on the table just to kind of show you um, some things. First of all, <laughs> I invested a couple days ago in a label maker. And uh, you can see the last <laughs> label I printed was mixed basil, and I'll show you in a minute where I put those. But it's so nice to have that now instead of having to do my handwriting, which is as you can see, not that amazing. Um, and also the labels just last longer and also they can be peeled off. So anyway, uh, over here I have, these are marigold seeds. Um, you can tell, let's see if I find one that has the flower still on it. Okay. Here's one with the flower still on it. And um, you can just take the flower top off and you end up with something like this. And then that's your seed to plant next year. Um, so I have to go through these and clean it up and then I'll put them, um, in an envelope like this. This is an envelope I started for some pink zinnias. I have no idea whether the colors stay true or not, but I figured I'd at least mark what I have, uh, what I have harvested so that I'm aware of it. Uh, let's see. You can see down there. I have a few. I had a whole lot more, but I'm giving some away, um, so I'm starting to harvest them again for the zinnias. Um, so I I gave away um, my purple Cherokee tomato seeds, but I have harvested the coxcomb. I marked that I, these are the tall ones, not the um, not the coral ones I have in the yard. These are the Gardener Delight cherry tomatoes. I did not this these were started on um, plants that I got from somebody in a trade. So I definitely needed seeds because I didn't have any of my own 
for them. There's the green zebra tomato seeds. And today um, I packed up my Jimmy Nardella peppers and fish pepper seeds. Um, I'm gonna try to get some more of those, but really, I mean, I only need like three or four plants, maybe at most, um, for my gardens. So I don't need a huge amount of seeds really to make this work. And here's the um, Mexican sunflower. I harvested one of the heads that this is, they grew, as if you saw the last video, they grew voluntarily in my yard this year from last year's harvest. So I decided to pluck a head uh, once the uh, petals had fallen off and I'm gonna let it dry here. Um, and then this is a red curry squash seeds. I cooked the squash this week. It was one I got from a farmer's market and I just saved some of the seeds. I have yet to look up whether they can be used straight from that, whether they need to be more mature to be harvested as seeds, but um, hey, it never hurts to try. And the squash was super delicious and really beautiful. Um, so yeah, I thought I'll try that next year. As for like my envelopes, I bought just a, a pack online of multicolored little envelopes that I bought this like halfway through the year um, just to put my seeds in. I don't really care what color it is, but then I put them in my box of goodies. And sometimes I'll even stuff them in the envelopes of the um of what they came with so that i know what they are but now that i have labels i don't need to do that a label machine all right now i'm going to show you my little stock that i have of my small canning and um dried herbs and um other things so this is my surplus <laughs> supplies i wouldn't normally use this case this bookcase for this but because of covid 19 i have extra stuff uh, more more stuff than I normally would um, so I'm just uh, I've, I've been I've employed this bookshelf for this purpose so today I labeled stuff uh, here's the peppermint that I have saved and dried and you know I don't have more here I'll open it up for you I don't have more than this because I've been eating the peppermint <laughs> all along but what I do is I, I dry it on paper towels or on a rack these I dried on little uh, metal racks like cookie sheets or like a sieve racks that you would use for other things. Um, and then, oops, I just lost a peppermint leaf. I'll get that later. And then once they're dry, you can put them in and yay, my labels. All right. Uh, I also have spearmint leaves. I have thyme, of which I don't have a lot of thyme. Ha! <laughs> I get the metaphor there. Um, some oregano from the garden. Lemon balm, that's also for teas. So if you combine lemon balm with Tulsi Holy Basil, which I have a big jar of back here from the garden, um, and you can also combine it with chamomile and mint, regular mint or peppermint, um, it just com it creates a really beautifully calming um, uh, tea that's just delicious also. I have sage. This is my really poorly done plantain leaf um, vodka tincture. Um, I just leave it in the leaves. I You're supposed to chop up the leaves. This is the first time trying it this year. It was in like in April and I didn't read all the directions so they look more like grape leaves in here. But the concoction worked well for helping along with um, apple cider vinegar helping to calm down my um, poison ivy at the beginning. It helped mellow it out a little bit. Like I said there's chamomile and then there's calendulous calendula leaf flowers that are dried and then i also have my calendula oil which is mostly empty now i've used it in solves a lot solves a lot um back here i have mixed basil and that's uh holy basil oh no let's see that's thai basil purple basil and regular italian basil all dried in, in there um and then oh <laughs> You've seen on other videos my Christmas lima beans. Come on, focus video, camera. I want to focus. One second, sorry. There we go. I keep a, even though I dry them, for something like this where there might still be moisture, I just keep a, one of those little, you know, the drying packs you get in like food packages or even with your shoes or things like that. I just keep a whole jar of them. Um, and for something like that, I'll just put them in there. So that's my little herb collection. Uh, from the garden uh, entirely this year and it's not very big but you know what I'm kind of happy about having it I'm happy to 
have these things available and I'm hoping next year I can have a lot more but you know this this winter when I'm really stressed out and not getting enough sun I can make a tea with chamomile <laughs> you see that's all the chamomile I have left because I use the flowers get tiny after they dry and also um, I mean I made chamomile tea with fresh flowers all summer long so I just didn't <laughs> have a whole lot of surplus to harvest especially since I only had like three plants all right now let me show you my canned goods these small rations that I have at the moment so this is my very disorganized, but you know, I have no shame, um, canning supply kitchen. This is where I keep the jars. Um, when I use them or have extras left, I put them back in here after I wash them. I have some that I haven't used yet. I have some that I um, haven't opened yet. So it just gives you an idea of where I kind of keep them on the shelf. And then uh, unopened jars. So I made a huge batch of strawberry rhubarb jam this summer beginning of the summer I have two of those left I've given probably six away maybe a little more than that away um, this is strawberry jam I made around the same time um, and it had I didn't take the foam off the top you know it was my first year doing any kind of canning and I didn't take the foam off the top and so you kind of have a little bit of residual on top but they're fine I, we have a couple in our fridge at the moment this is an applesauce using just the ball canning recipe I used like See, I didn't get all the bubbles out either. I used like four types of apples. I don't remember what they all were. Um, because I heard and I read that using more than one type of apple actually gives a deeper flavor. And I tell you what, I've already gone through two jars and it's only been like one week since I <laughs> canned them. So I didn't have to can. Next time I do it, I will um, not can a few jars worth and keep it out because I just can't wait. This is my first attempt at canning um vegetables these are remember the dragon tongue bush beans well they may be purple and green when they're raw but when they're cooked they turn white which is kind of cool i found that they don't hold up as well as regular green beans when they're canned um, when they're pickled these are dilly bean recipe um from ball jar although my grandma wrote it down for me in in her recipe book in her handwriting um and it has a little bit of her extra stuff like cayenne pepper in it um, but so I enjoyed that so much and I probably made like a dozen of these, um, and I, I'm down to one, even though they weren't amazing. So then last weekend, here's another, here's the one big jar I did of applesauce. I did a whole bunch of small ones and you know, I'm just figuring it out. Here's the wall, tall one. You may wonder why I don't have, oh, you can see on my wrist, leftover poison ivy. Yeah. It's healing, but it's taking its time. All right. Um, the reason... Um, I don't have the lids on is because I've heard that if you leave the, if you leave the screw top lids on these, um, these guys, right? If you leave the screw top lids on like that, that then you can't see if the seal is held. You can't see kind of what's happening here with the, um, with the ingredients. And also, you know, you can test it, test the seal over time because the seal's can be false and you can find out they're not working well so if you can lift the jar by just this top little metal sealed cap um then then you know it's good so back here i have three jars this is full well, what are they called quart size jars i have three full quart size jars of full size green beans these are not from my garden unlike the other jar these are ones that i got at the farmer's market last weekend and it took a little more than a pound for each jar of these and still I think I didn't pack them tight enough because look there's liquid on the bottom but I've learned that they seem to do okay that way um, having the liquid in the bottom um, you know not not being staying at the bottom of the liquid where they're a little bit above it I honestly don't think this can these jars are gonna last in terms of being unopened past probably January. I'll probably have gone through all of them. I don't think you understand how much I love dilly beans, pickled uh, green beans. So that's my canning progress so far. Not a huge amount, um, you know, but I'm learning as I go. Uh, and you know, I I do have a freezer full of meat, which I'm also gonna show you. I write. Um, here, I'll, I'll turn the camera so you can see me. I almost forgot one thing. I made and I've given away, I have more, I have a checklist, I still have more to give away. But I made, with my broadleaf plantain and calendula, I made 
bug mom bug solve uh, I'm not going to dig into this one, but um, it's with beeswax, calendula oil, and um, um, plantain oil. Plantain is not the bananas. That is the leaf um, that grows wild in your yard that has wonderful medicinal healing properties for the skin. and is amazing for getting rid of bug bites. Um, and all you do is... Now, you wouldn't put this on poison ivy or something because it does have olive oil in it. You don't want oil-based products on things like poison ivy that need to dry up but it's great for pulling out bug bites because it actually has a um it has the ability to remove toxins so i have i have three jars of this i have one in these are not sealed these are like decorative jars but that doesn't matter when it's a solve um so i made like i think 20 some of these um that i'm giving away to friends and family um, and then I made three of the big ones. I'm actually going to put them in a dark place so they last the, the winter. Um, and then, oh yeah, up here <laughs> I have more. So this is this is the dried plantain leaves. <laughs> My nice pretzel jar I got from a coworker when we were still going to work back in the day. These are the dried plantain leaves from my yard. Um, I can use them in different things throughout the year, but I keep... This one up here because it's just so big along with some other tea extras. And then this is um, dead nettle, which I haven't looked up how to use it. I forgot the value, but I gathered it this spring. I think it's good um, for digestive issues. I have to look it up again. I don't remember it offhand. But these are the dried dead nettle leaves also. So by day, I'm actually an uh, energy writer. I write about energy issues and uh, climate change and things like that. And um, I write about the electric grid. And so while I get why a lot of people like to do canned goods, um, I'm also aware that the power grid, at least on the East Coast, on the West Coast is a whole different story with the wildfires and mandatory shutoffs to prevent wildfires. Anyway, if you're in the West, you understand that. Um, but at least on the East Coast thus far... Uh, the grid is pretty stable, and blackouts happen much less and less, I'd say, in the last 10 years than in the past. Utilities have been better about um, preventing outages that last for more than, like, a few hours or even a day. Um, so I'm just pretty confident that um, the freezer, you know, a freezer chest is a good option for us in the interim, especially since I, at the moment, cannot afford and really have not gotten into pressure canning, which really you need to do to, to pressure can meat. I hope to get into that next year. Um, hint to anybody, any family members who are thinking of Christmas gifts, a pressure canner from everyone pitching in would be awesome. But uh, anyway, <laughs> don't worry about that. I'll take care of that end of it. But I'm gonna show you my um, my freezer just real quick to see so you get an idea of what I have there. So in the interest of disclosure, I'm not gonna make it look prettier than it is. <laughs> um, this is chicken broth. I made and froze from um, bones I got from the farmer's market for $2 a pound, which is a great rate for um, organic chicken. Um, we had some meat left over. I've already used a few bags of it, um, and I'm going to get more chicken bones next weekend uh, from the farmer's market. Um, these are frozen peaches. You know, I know you can do canned peaches, but I actually really, really like the taste of fresh frozen peaches. It tastes more like a real peach straight, you know, straight cut with the sweetness. It does have a sugar syrup, um, medium sugar syrup, but I just really, I really, there's nothing like thawing that out and having that over pancakes or even just having it over uh, cottage cheese in the morning, if you really want. Then we have, I'm gonna get past the bags of veggies and packs, past my backup gluten-free bread and more veggies, but here I'll show you. I have, whenever I buy chicken thighs, I buy a bulk set, and then I wrap them up tightly with no air, the ones that I'm not using, and I do sets of two in each bag, because it's just two of us, my husband and I, and so I really only need two per meal, so I just take it out and put it in a bowl, because it doesn't hold the liquid very well, it's not waterproof, but I'll take the saran wrapped one out and put it in a bowl um, and let it thaw for a day and then we'll have the right portion of chicken thighs. These are some extra tomatoes that I just didn't have time to do anything with to process in the garden. So I just rinsed them off, um, cored them, diced, uh, took them into slices 
And I have them in here and I will pull them out um, as I need it. I haven't had to use them yet. And then just about every weekend, I keep these in bags at the moment, but just about every weekend, I go to the farmer's market and there's a farmer, a lady, a husband, um, who are just really great farmers. And I buy meat every week at the farmer's market. Um, I buy about twice the amount. Oh, that should be over here. Oh, oh, it's lamb. It's in the right place. I buy about twice the amount of meat that I need. And I tend to keep it in bags because it is a deep chest. It's just easier to pull them out in different sets. This is all different kinds of meats down here. These are bones that I need to make soup bones out of. Yeah, I have a whole bunch of, just a whole bunch of meat in here, as well as strawberries. Oh gosh, I can't wait to make. This is, um, these are not beef soup bones. It was wrongly labeled. This is um, shin bone, so that's marrow in there. That's gonna be so delicious in a soup. Oh, beef soup with, with shin bone, with bone marrow in it. Oh yeah. Anyway, so that's sort of how um, the freezer chest is, it used to be filled about up to here with meat at the beginning of the pandemic because the lady would come every weekend and I would buy probably like $50 worth of meat, maybe even like $75 worth of meat, um, because I just didn't know how the pandemic supplies were going to go. Um, I gotta clean that off so the seal is better. I'll take care of that in a minute. But yeah, there's the freezer chest and, um, let me switch to main camera. Yeah, so that's the freezer chest. And it serves our purpose as well. It's a good combination of both the canning and the frozen options. Um, I have a whole bunch of um, of beans as well as rice. I think I have, I think I just bought a 15 or 20 pound bag of rice. So I have a whole bunch of stuff I've stored up. Um, I am not saving enough food at the moment to last us months and months, but certainly we have more than enough as long as we have running water or um, that we could potentially have food for at least like a month. The only thing I haven't kept up with that I've meant to is I, I used to keep like three or four bags, big bags of dog food on hand um, as backup because for a while it was hard to find the kind of dog food my dogs ate. Um, but now I'm not doing that as much and that reminds me I probably ought to do that. So that gives you an idea of what uh, I do basically, what I've done this summer and um, I'm doing this fall in terms of prepping and saving things. None of it is major prep work. None of it is major homesteading. But, you know, it's my first year trying it. I'm learning as I go. Um, I definitely don't want to, like, make huge investments in things that I haven't tried and don't know if they'll work. And, and so I think next year I'll probably do a lot more canning, a lot more preserving, maybe even get a dehydrator. Um, but I'm kind of happy with how much I've done. And uh, I'm definitely going to do some more apples both applesauce and regular apples and um, probably some, um, oh yeah, I have things like fridge pickles and fridge um, pickled um, cabbage and things like that. I do that as well, um, as well as sprouts and things like that. But All right, so that gives you an idea. If you uh, enjoyed this video, please hit the like button. Tell me what you think. Are there any um, things that you particularly enjoy canned or any recipes or that you remember your mom or grandma cooking that you'd love to try again? And if you want to share the recipe, I'd love to hear it. Um, and if you aren't already a subscriber, please consider doing so. And please um, hit that uh, alarm button, that little bell thing that shows gives you a reminder when I post a new content. I try to post weekly if I can. And otherwise, I'll see you next time. And I hope you have a good week growing and figuring life out just like the rest of us.